In this lesson, we're going to take a look at just how nice Inertia.js is whenever it comes to form validation handling. So we already have our register page and login page set up with a form hooked up to a route. And this particular route is just going to const.log out our body. So for starters, in order to take a look at validation handling, we need to have some form of validation. So let's go ahead and do node ace make validator. We're going to go ahead and set this up for the same validator with our register and login routes. So we'll just call this auth. I'm also going to go ahead and boot up the server. And underneath our console logs, just so that we can verify that we've actually reached the routes, let's do const data equals await request.validate auth validator. And then for now, let's just go ahead and console.log out that data. We'll cover actual registration and login later on. Let's also go ahead and copy and paste this up into our login route. Okay, and then within the validator itself, let's go ahead and scroll down. Actually, let's import our rules first, and then let's scroll down the schema. We're going to have two properties. We're going to have one for email. This will be schema.string. It will be required. We can go ahead and trim it and set the rules for this to be email. And that should do it. Then we'll go ahead and do password schema.string. And let's go ahead and set it rules min length of eight, since that seems to be a fairly common password minimum length. Give that a save. And let's next take a look at the register page after we go ahead and test and see what everything is doing within our form. So let's go ahead and refresh our form here get the view dev tools up and let's navigate down to our register page. So you can see that we have our form here with our email and password properties on it, as well as our submit function. But if we actually click on register, you're going to notice something else pop up within our ATTRs. This is our attributes. So these are really just unbound props for the component. So this contains our errors object with our email and password, both containing the required validation failure. So we are already getting our validation errors within our component, we just haven't registered it so that we can't ingest it. So all that we need to do with Inertia.js whenever we have a page level form, meaning the forms on the same level as a page, is register the errors as a prop. So we can come into our register form here, do props, errors, and instead of just setting this as an object, what I like to do is set this as a type of object with a default value of an empty object. That way we don't need to actually verify whether or not the errors property exists within our template. So now we can scroll up to our template and I'm gonna set these up a little bit differently so that they're more like form groups. So let's do div class equals margin bottom of three and that div and let's do the same thing for this one. So div class margin bottom of three and the div and let's also get rid of that on the end of itself. Okay, now when it comes to actually displaying our errors, we can do a div class text extra small text red 500 and we can do on this div a v if errors dot email and since we set errors to always be at least an empty object by default we don't need to check whether or not errors actually exist we can just check whether or not email exists off of error to simplify those checks just a little bit and then we can do errors dot email and then email in itself is going to be an array so we can do dot join and just make that a common delimited list we can go ahead and copy that and paste that down here for our password as well, changing email to password. Give that a save, jump back into our browser, hit register, and it does look like we do have an error. Let's see what that error is. Can't access property email. CTX errors is undefined. So it's having an issue finding the errors. Oh, look at that, I forgot an R. And it looks like I copy and pasted that from up here, so let's change it there as well. Give that a save, jump back into our browser, hit register once more, and voila, we can now see our validation errors just underneath both of our inputs. So let's take a quick pivot and talk about where the errors object here is actually being populated from. So this is actually a default configuration here set up by the Adonis Inertia adapter. And if we take a look within our application here, you're gonna notice that within our start directory, we have a file called inertia.ts. If we take a look at what's within this file, you'll see that it has an inertia.share call with a property called errors within it. And what this errors is doing is it's getting our HTTP context going into the session, taking a look at the flash messages, and then getting back the errors from those flash messages, AKA this is our form validation errors. And the share property here pretty much allows us to share just about anything from our Adonis side into our view context. We'll get more comfy with this as we progress through the series, but this is where the errors property is actually being populated from within our application. Well, okay, we can change this to a type of text to verify that our email validation here is passing. So we just put test there, and then you can see email validation failed. So that is working just fine. 
Now, it's probably likely that you're going to want this particular block of code all over your application. So let's go ahead and move this off into a component. So let's create a new component called form input, give it a template, paste the contents from there within here. And let's do some view three stuff with a setup script. Okay, so first our props. So let's do const props equals define props. We'll want a type for our form type. This will be of type string. And we'll set the default to that of text. We'll have a label. We'll set that up here in a second. A placeholder, our model value. And lastly, our errors. And at this level, our errors will be an array instead of an object, since they'll be specific to this field. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up. So we'll have type of type, our V model. Let's actually set this up to an internal value instead of rigging it straight up to our model value so that we can get more of a cycle going on instead of a pipeline. And then let's do our placeholder as placeholder. Instead of v if errors dot password or any particular key, we can do array dot is array errors. And then instead of errors dot password dot join, we can just do errors dot join. Okay, lastly for our internal value, let's do import computed from view const emits equals define emits update model value and const internal value equals computed get return props dot model value and set value of oop sorry I meant to call that emit not emits emit update model value of the new value okay cool so let's give that a save and let's actually register it within our register component so let's go ahead and import it form input from at slash components slash form input components form input right there and let's swap it out so so let's do form input label equals actually we didn't add the label in we'll do that here next the model equals form dot email and errors equals errors dot email copy this replace everything email with password and we can now get rid of both of these inputs. Okay, let's jump back into the form input component and actually add in our label. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap the entire input inside of a label. That way we don't actually need a name for the input. And then we'll do a span class block font semi bold and do the label there. Actually, we also want a v if label on that. So we can give that a save, let's go take a look. Cool, so we have our email label with our form input and our password input. Let's also go ahead and make that header a little bit larger. So class equals text 3XL font bold. And let's go ahead and copy and paste this over into our login page. So it should be a one for one swap right there. Let's go ahead and copy and paste the import. And since we are using our alias here, we don't need to worry about updating any of the paths there with that copy and paste. And lastly, copy and paste the registration as well, since neither of these are setup scripts. Well, this one has a setup script within it, but nevertheless, still using the overall options API there. One more thing, let's go ahead and make this bigger as well. So text 3XL font bold. Okay, now let's test it out. So there's our register page. Here's our login page. All right, and it looks like we got some errors. Um, let's see. Oh, well, errors cause the errors. All right, let's jump back into our login page here. We are missing the prompts. So uh, we can actually go ahead and just copy and paste that from here as well. So we did not register errors as a prop, therefore it did not exist. And that's also one of the things that we're bypassing by setting this as a default of an empty object as well, so that we don't need to worry about running across that once we actually get the prop registered. So let's go ahead and jump back into our browser, give this a refresh. And so now we should be able to boom, there, that's working. Register, we'll double check this. Boom, that's working. I'm gonna add a slight margin to the bottom of our titles, and then we'll call it a day. So margin bottom six there, margin bottom six there, and voila. So, all right, so now that we understand form error handling and displaying those, in the next lesson, we'll contrast what we learned in this lesson by covering flash messages. <laughs>